Here is Myanmar's parallel fake government called the National Unity Government. Here is the National Unity Government declaring war on their own country. And uh, so let's take a look at the opposition media itself, how they're covering this. And then let's take a look at what they actually said. And then let's talk about what this means for Myanmar, because as soon as Myanmar's military took over, in February of this year, I warned people that this was going to go the same way as Libya. The U.S. Uh, client regime was ousted from power by Myanmar's military, and the U.S. would do everything in its power to either install that regime back into power or just, just destroy the whole country and deny it as a functional, prosperous partner for China and, and to disrupt its Belt and Road Initiative, which passes through Myanmar. So this is from Myanmar now. It's funded by the U.S. government through the National Endowment for Democracy. The title is Myanmar's Shadow Government Declares Resistance War Against Military Junta. The NUG's acting president calls on the public, the People's Defense Force, and ethnic armed organizations to revolt against Min Aung Klang's military council. And so that is actually basically what he did. He's telling all, all of these armed groups and followers to go fight in this war against themselves, against their own country. And uh, people like this, uh, Duwa Lashi La, he's, he's not going to be in any sort of danger. No one in the national unity government will be in any real danger. It's all of the people they're going to dupe into going and destroying their own country that are going to be in danger. The people are going to pit against Myanmar's military. They will be in danger. And of course, the, the purpose of this is to create an unmitigated bloodbath and invite foreign interference. And again, just ask yourself, when was the last time the U.S. intervened anywhere and the country that was the target turned out for the better? And the answer is nowhere, ever. And I compare this to Libya because this really is another Libya in the making. They're, they're setting everything up almost exactly like they did for Libya. Uh, here is the Reuters article covering the, the same announcement. Myanmar shadow government calls for a revolt against military rule. And they don't really talk about uh, too much about the 14-point the speech. Uh, but in it, they're basically telling people, you have no choice. You need to switch sides, join us. And they never really say what the consequences are, but I, I'm going to show you what the consequences are. And of course, Reuters isn't going to tell you what the consequences are, even though one of the articles I'm going to, to share with you very explicitly shows you what the consequences are. So here's the consequence. Uh, here's one example. This was from August 31st, 2021, after bold attack. PDF fighters consider their next move. So this is the People's Defense Force that the National Unity Government is calling on to go wage war against their own country. And this is about six railway police officers murdered while sitting in their chairs on a train to, to protect the train because the, the PDF, these militants, these terrorists are attacking Myanmar's infrastructure. So there's guards trying to protect it. And then they go and attack and kill the guards as well. And if you go through this article, you'll see they, they show off the dead police officer, they show off the, the opposition brandishing the stolen weapons, and they talk about how they urged more officers to join the civil disobedience movement. And uh, one of the people involved in this attack said, anyone in uniform who continues to work for the junta, including traffic police, firefighters, and even Red Cross workers is fair game. And when you listen to the speech and you, you read it, and I'll put the link in the video description below so you can watch the whole thing. There's su English subtitles. This is basically what they're saying. They're saying anyone still working for the government, uh, you, you're going to be a target. You need to join us and you need to report for duty and, and join our armed uh, insurrection against Myanmar's military. That's what they're saying. Th this is someone from the People's Defense Forces saying they're going to kill everyone. Traffic police, firefighters, even Red Cross workers, they're all fair game. Anyone in uniform. And uh, in the next article from Reuters, I'm going to show you how they even talk about killing teachers. And, and here's how they respond to the, the death of these railway police. 
Uh, they should have taken part in the civil dis disobedience movement. At the end of the day, they were working for the dictators. That's why they were killed. So this is, this is what's been going on in Myanmar since the military took over. The, uh, the opposition has been using violence and terrorism to try to seize back power. And now this is just the national unity government openly declaring war on their own, own country, own, own people. And they're just going to expand the use of these tactics. This is what they've been doing all along. They'll claim that they're, they're trying to protect uh, the civilians, but they will make these caveats where, well, if you're a civilian working for the junta, that doesn't really count as being a civilian. And hey, here's an article from Reuters. Boycott and bombings mar Myanmar's new school year. So in order to force people to join the civil disobedience movement, these people's defense forces have been bombing and shooting at schools. This is to discourage students and teachers who ignored the civil disobedience movement. This is to force them to not go to school, not out of solidarity for this fake US-backed opposition, but out of fear for their lives. And it even says right here, teachers were also afraid. Some teachers go to school in normal clothing and change into their uniforms only inside the school. And you know, Reuters tries to make this as ambiguous as possible. This was from June, 2021. Uh, but this more recent article from Myanmar now, again, funded by the US government, this is not Myanmar state media. They're saying that anyone in uniform is fair game. And so they talk about traffic, police, firefighters, and even Red Cross workers, uh, but also teachers, also teachers. Now, I've pointed out many times, if you go to the U.S. government's own National Endowment for Democracy website, you will see this extensive list of programs here that they are funding inside of Myanmar. Uh, this is involved in every aspect of the socio-political landscape in the country. This is blatant interference, foreign interference in Myanmar's internal political affairs. This is contra to the UN Charter. It is a violation of international law, and it is the type of interference the US itself would never tolerate another nation doing to it. But this is what it is doing to Myanmar, and you can read on their own website what they're involved in doing. And um, here is Dr. Sasa. This is from Mother Jones, and this is him saying, hey, we need we need the United States to do more. We need the United States to recognize the national unity government. This could help free up uh, money that is frozen by the U.S., Myanmar government money that is frozen by the U.S. It could be given to this fake government if the U.S. recognizes it, and they could get all kinds of other forms of support. Uh, he doesn't say it, but probably also he's thinking weapons and, and different forms of military support up to and perhaps even including some sort of intervention. And here is Wendy Sherman. She's Deputy Secretary of State. And here she's talking to Zin Mar Ang. And they're talking about getting getting Burma back back on the path of democracy. Well, Burma is what Myanmar was called under British colonial rule and the US still calls it Burma. And this is out of this is out of spite. This is to stick it to Myanmar, uh, telling them, we'll call your country whatever we want. We don't care what you actually call it. And this is the deputy secretary of state doing this. And so she's talking to this person, Zin Mar Ang. Who is she? Uh, if you go to the National Unity Government's official website, they list uh, all, all of the people in this, this parallel fake government. And she is actually the Minister of Foreign Affairs. This is her right here, Zin Mar Ang. But who else is she? She is a fellow at the National Endowment for Democracy. This is her own webpage on the NED's official website, Zin Mar Ang. They even gave her uh, at, at least one NED funded front to run the Yangon School of Political Science. And they even admit it's an NED funded institution that educates young activists in the values of democracy. But of course, what it's doing is churning out people who will vote in Myanmar elections the way the US wants them to vote. This is the whole, this is the whole purpose of the NED getting involved in a targeted country's internal political affairs. So you can see every aspect of this opposition, this so-called national unity government, this is a client regime run in actuality by and for Washington and Wall Street, not for the people of Myanmar. It was a blatant example of foreign interference. Myanmar's military, no matter what you think about them, had no choice but to uproot that government from power. And now this same uprooted, foreign-funded, foreign-backed client regime serving U.S. interests, now they're declaring war on their own country. 
on the people of Myanmar. They're doing it through terrorist means that they attempt to justify even in opposition media. They're asking for the U.S. to recognize them as the official government of Myanmar. And so we, we can see how this has taken one step after the other toward the same fate as Libya. And of course, we know Libya now is not a functioning nation state. It is a failed state at perpetual war with itself. And this is exactly what's going to happen to Myanmar. And again, what is this all about? This is about Myanmar bordering China, so a failed state right on China's border. This is also a country China has included in its Belt and Road Initiative. So all of those projects and investments will be ruined. The opposition is already openly targeting Chinese investments in the country. For example, burning down Chinese factories, this is admitted. And so this is just another part of America's wider plan to encircle and contain China. So let's keep an eye on this. I will keep an eye on this. Reuters, uh, AFP, AP, CNN, the BBC, none of them will give you any of this context. I will. I will continue doing it. If you thought this video was useful, please like and share it. Uh, think about subscribing. It helps the channel grow and it's free to do. I have a website, newatlas.report. All of my articles and videos are there. If I ever get kicked off of YouTube, it's a, it's a one-stop place where you can follow all of my work. There is no paywall and there never will be. So please bookmark it and check it out from time to time. Check out the video description for the links to all of, the, all of this information that I referenced in this video, as well as for ways you can help support my work to people who are already supporting my work, whether it's through Patreon uh, month to month or through one-time donations, or even if you're just helping liking and sharing my, my content. Thank you so much. Without that support, none of this is possible. And as always, thank you for watching.